All right, everybody, welcome to another episode of The Urban Gardener. I want to thank you all so much for joining me here today on this episode. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button down below. Follow along with more garden adventures here on The Urban Gardener. In fact, there's a bell right next to the subscribe button. Hit that bell to be notified of upcoming episodes as we continue growing here on The Urban Gardener. Today, I'm in the back alleyway here on the fence line, and we're gonna go over and do a kind of a short episode talking about our tomatoes and our peppers we've got growing this season here in The Urban Garden. So um, I've got uh, some pruning action going on on the tomatoes right now. I'm gonna go and finish up that pruning, and then, We'll talk about exactly what plants we've got growing on here and in the back for the peppers and all the other little things you see growing down below there too. Take a look at what we've got growing on down this way. First off, right here, we've got ourselves a pumpkin. Now, I've also talked about before in the last couple of episodes about how we've kind of gotten a late start to everything, but I think we might have just enough days left. I'm not sure, we'll see. But the one bonus right now is if you see right down below here, we've got an actual pumpkin already pollinated now the other day i saw this female flower and i was like okay i got to get out real early in the morning make sure i got them when they're wide open get some of these male flowers and be sure that that gets pollinated so everything's kind of going good now we hand pollinated it but i will say that when i came out in the morning i got up real early to do it and uh when i came out there were bees all over all of the flowers jumping around and everything so i probably didn't even need to worry about hand pollinating it at all because i'm sure the bees probably did the job as well but if that one doesn't work out or if something happens to that one luckily enough we got another one right here too so if that one don't work out hopefully that flower will be coming out and we'll get that pollinated and we'll see which one it's growing the strongest over the next couple of weeks and we'll just keep one pumpkin on this whole plant this year. And I'll have the plant just focus all of its energy onto that one pumpkin. Now this here is a uh, supposed to be a very large sized pumpkin too. So I wanna see how big we can get it grown before the end of the season. So let's move on right to our first tomato plant that we got here. And just real quick, we'll go also over what we were doing here with the pruning. Now I got up underneath of each of these plants here and what we've done is we've kind of pruned out a lot of the lower leaves and lower suckers on these tomato plants in order to give some good airflow here and uh, also to help keep some uh, uh, resistance from disease that can pop up off of the soil as you're watering and things like that are happening so now they can breathe just a little bit easier. Right here this very first plant is an orange Kentucky so this should be a nice big orange type of uh, tomato there. I was given this uh, tomato seed a couple of seasons ago actually. And I don't think we grew it last year. So I wanted to really try it out and make sure we can get some uh, of those and see how they uh, taste. And I just, I'm really excited about this plant here. So hopefully this one works out really well. We do got a lot of good flowers that are starting to form on all of our plants and everything. This next one here is called a Volkov. Now I got the seeds from the same person. Both of these plants here, the Orange Kentucky and this Volkov. They seem to be doing pretty well for just being put out just only a couple of weeks ago too. So they're just really booming. So I'm really kind of excited about that. I was worried about being late in the season and not being able to get a good uh, tomato harvest because of that but looks like everything seems to be going pretty well. I'm really excited about all the flowers I'm seeing today. And right down below, we got ourselves a cantaloupe. It's really starting to spread now. It's going all over the place, going there, heading there, heading out towards our pumpkin and all of that, coming out towards the grass line and everything. 
heading over to the other plant there. So, um, you can see right down in here too. Got ourselves a, one little pollinated cantaloupe there. I was looking around. I don't know if I, oh, there's another one. Yep, there we are. There's another one there. So that's really exciting to see, just to know that we actually have some fruit developing right now already. So those should get nice and mature. Hopefully really delicious. I love cantaloupe. And more so though, I love watermelon. And this plant is just also starting to spread out and the leaves are really starting to get nice and big, which is really encouraging. It was really slow to get started growing. I'm not sure if I really like the space or the transplanting and all of that. Probably didn't like the transplanting all that well. So that's our Crimson Sweet Watermelon. And unfortunately, like the cantaloupe, I haven't quite seen any fruit yet coming on the vines. No female flowers quite yet. So I'm still hopeful. Should be coming up soon, hopefully. Now here is another tomato plant we got growing this year. Got seed from a friend, a viewer of ours, Nancy, who sent me out the Rapunzel cherry tomato seed, which is a tomato plant featured on Ray Browning's channel, Praxis 55712. And um, I haven't grown Rapunzel before, so I'm hoping that we get something nice here. There's some flowers already coming out, so you should be seeing some fruit forming here pretty soon. But yeah, I'm kind of excited about tasting that and trying that after watching it grow on the other channels for the last couple of seasons. And right down below, we've got some jackpot zucchini. Planted out a few seeds here. Um, few weeks back and uh, they pop right up and they're growing really really well right now so I've been seeing a lot of people who've got zucchini already coming out of their gardens and I've been really jealous but uh, I've got mine coming really soon I'm sure of it really really sure of it and right here's the other tomato plant I've been growing in this garden since uh, well before I started making this channel but this one's also Prax uh, the Prax Cherry Tomato, featured on Praxis 55712. And uh, this year, Ray is actually growing this plant again. Uh, he sent out seeds several years ago, stopped growing it, and started growing the Rapunzel and a couple of others. And um, he just decided to start growing it again this year. So, um, kind of really excited to see it growing in his garden again but always a really great feature of our garden. I've got one other uh, Prax Cherry uh, tomatoes to show you in just a little bit here. Um, but moving on down here below, we've got uh, some Hearts of Gold cantaloupe. And these plants are really actually just now, I've noticed over the last couple of days, starting to do really well and taking off. So they should be spreading really, really quick here real soon. As I said, a lot of these plants are still kind of young. I did get kind of a late start, so I'm just kind of keeping my fingers crossed that we're gonna actually get something going out of them. I'm not sure, but if not, we'll have fun growing the plants anyways. And um, this one right here, this tomato plant is called the Ponderosa Beefsteak. So we've got a really nice stock there. Everything's getting really, they're looking really good. Like I said, these kind of got stored away for a while waiting for me to get them planted out and got planted out a bit late. But they're really resistant uh, and um, ready to grow when you put them out and they just took right off. And we've got some good flowers forming there. So hopefully we'll get some good beefsteak tomatoes off of that one there. And right down below, we've got a really young looking watermelon plant here. And this one's really slow to get growing. It's a uh, sugar baby. 
So it uh, should be a nice small melon. So hopefully if it gets going, we can get some fruit. They don't have to be very big. Don't take too long to develop. So hopefully that'll work out. I'm not too sure. Right on the other side of that is um, our Waltham butternut squash plants that we uh, planted out seeds uh, a couple of weeks ago. And um, we have to thin these out a little bit. Just pick uh, basically one or two of the strongest plants there. Probably just take this one and one of these over here. Maybe relocate the other plants. Problem with squash though is they don't really like to be transplanted. They don't like to be dug up. And um, so we'll try it and see what happens, but I wouldn't be too sure of getting any real fruit off of anything that I dig up out of the ground. So I'm not sure, but I do got a space I might try and see what happens though. And this here is our uh, super steak tomato. Now I saw these tomato seeds and the tomatoes and I was like I've got to try this out I want a really really good beefsteak tomato this year so hopefully we'll get something we're just starting to see some good flowers coming up so hopefully I'm gonna start seeing some fruits here real soon and like I said though too, keep an eye on uh, future episodes here as we uh, will do a summer tour here of the whole gardens coming up in a few weeks and um, We'll be able to see some updates on some of these and hopefully there'll be some fruits on those and we've got some sunflowers I'll talk about the sunflowers for a minute um you can see the ones growing on the other side of the fence there already got some really nice flowers coming out these are all volunteer these sunflowers come up like weeds every single year but when they grow really nice and tall they're real beautiful plants and um, these ones produce kind of a smaller um, flower than the really, really big ones I'd like to have. The plants are just really something else. And uh, look at this one over here. That one's just really reaching for the sky there. Putting off a lot of different flower shoots as well. So there'll be multiple, multiple flowers coming off of them. And this year, um, they're just growing really, really healthy, looking really nice. But like I said, they're like weeds, so um, I do have to actually um, <laughs> pull them out of the ground all over the place, even all the way in the alleyways, all over the place. They start popping up everywhere, even right down the middle of the alleyway where people are driving. Okay, so our next uh, tomato here as you can tell if you look at the leaf look at the leaf there it's a little bit different and that's more of a brandywine type of uh, tomato there has a different type of leaf formation um, this here is a true black brandywine I actually really liked the uh, tomatoes so I grew uh, an extra plant back here as well as a volunteer I have on the other side I'll show you in just a few minutes and right down below I think what I did is I put in a um, I think that's a, a kale or a, I'm not sure oh yeah this is a cucumber actually it's one of the extra cucumbers I had I planted out there along with a, a volunteer uh, kale that popped up along with the cucumber in its pot so I figured I'd keep them together and uh, let this uh, cucumber, if it gets going at all, it's really kind of slow to go right now, but kind of let it grow up this uh, sunflower. It gets a chance there. And then right in front, another little extra watermelon uh, that uh, came up. Still, I don't know if I have any really hope for it at all, but hopefully there's enough time in the season for the plant to grow really nice. And let's look here, we've got, oh, our Oregon Spring tomato plant here. So, tomato plant named after my home state, Oregon here. And um, I don't know if I saw any fruits forming on this one yet. But lots of flowers starting to come out. down below that there we have our sugar bliss cantaloupe so 
so it's starting to really stretch out as well probably head up try to head up on the other side of the fence there and everything but yet still not seeing any flowers on it we'll see what happens there in an update in a future episode and the last two tomato plants that I've got growing here are both um, San Marzano. And I grow two San Marzano plants. They're, I really like these uh, tomatoes. They're really great for the tomato sauce I like to make. And so I grow a couple of those and both plants seem to be doing really, really well now. Right along with everyone else, they're just really starting to uh, just take off. And in between them, right below our sunflower there, we have a uh, tomatillo, which uh, volunteered in some soil I had in a pot. So I just put it here, um, as well as the um, cucumber I showed you just a minute ago in the same pot. I was growing actually this uh, watermelon here, which is a Jana 6 watermelon. This is, came from a seed I got from a watermelon I tasted at the National Heirloom Expo. So I was really wanting to try that out and see how that would work out. I saved some seed for next year, hopefully to get it out a little bit earlier and have a better chance at getting a really good fruit off of it. But again, hopefully we'll just get some nice, a nice plant if anything else. And there's that San Marzano again. And right below it, We've got a spaghetti squash. Now this one's been having a hard, hard time back here in this area. Just every day it seems like something's trying to take a bite off of it. But it's been weathering through all of that and it's starting to put off some really nice new growth lately. So I'm hoping the plant's just going to really just outgrow all of the pests and the uh, interference that it's dealing with and uh, get growing and hopefully we'll have a nice real spread here and some really good butternuts or uh, spaghetti squashes all right well that gets us to the end of the line of the tomatoes there and get down and talk about these guys Look at that. We got ourselves some nice fresh radishes all ripe and ready to be harvested right out of our pepper buckets. Some over here as well. Nice big one right over here. So yeah, what a nice little bonus there with our peppers. Some of our uh, radish seed that we had this last season must have got into the soil for our uh, peppers that got mixed up but uh, here it is here's our uh, pepper garden for this year and real quick here right up there is where they used to grow now uh, the last few seasons we grew our peppers up on top of the carport roof and I'll put links to uh, an episode right now. You can check that out and see our rooftop gardening of our peppers. But we weren't able to grow them there this year because the people who own the place decided that they didn't want them up there this year. Maybe next year I'll sneak them back up there and see if we can get away with it, but I don't know. Yeah, it was just really good source of light, great place to grow if you can and if you're able to, but uh, my neighbors here in this backyard area are letting me use this area to grow out our peppers for this year, so um, they're getting really good light here, great spot for them to grow in. You know, right off the bat, right here, the one, it's one of the ones with the radishes there, this is a red Marconi pepper, and next to that we have a it's called a pusa juala if i'm pronouncing that right 
And down the row, we've got a jalapeno. Now, this is just a regular jalapeno. Real quick, we'll look at it again, but I'll just say right across from it, though, is a tam jalapeno, which uh, doesn't have all the heat. And then next to the jalapeno there, we've got a chocolate habanero. I've been growing this the last couple of years, and uh, just last year I was only able to get uh, two pods off of the plant. And so these are seeds from that. So hopefully we'll see what we can get in growing and hopefully get a better harvest off of those. Next to that, we've got kind of a popular pepper for me and some of my friends and whatnot. They really like this pepper plant, so I grow it, hand it out to them and whatnot. They got, uh, this is called the Devil's Brain. It's really, really gnarly super hot pepper just got all sorts of crinkles on it and everything so like i said before looked over forward to some updates and possibly some harvest episodes later in the season too and see how these plants are actually coming out now this one here is a anaheim pepper and right behind it we have a pepper I like to grow each year I got from another pepper gardener on YouTube, Brando Toe, who gave me this super heavy weight here. And then right across from it is a Dos Deslandes. Now these plants look really nice and green, so I'm looking for some hopefully good production off them this year. I really enjoy both of these. They're a sweet pepper. This one's kind of a long, looks like a red hot, red chili pepper but it's actually one of the sweetest like candy peppers you'll eat i really like growing this if you saw on one of our previous episodes i do have um two more of these plants growing in the back patio area now this one here is really cool and i'm growing this one as i mentioned before uh nancy one of our viewers sent me uh the uh, rapunzel seeds and she also sent me this Chinese five color pepper. Now look at this plant. This is really neat because I haven't grown a pepper plant yet that has different colored flowers. Look at the, if you can see the purple on there. I'm trying to find, a, let's see if we can't get in on one of the, look at the flowers here. But just a really cool colors. So I'm really excited to see some of these peppers start to form as they already are. There's one right back here. Oh, a couple of them actually starting to form already. So looking for, forward to seeing how those turn out. And right down next to it, we've got a Scotch bonnet. Scotch bonnet, nice habanero type hot pepper and next to that we've got a they call it tequila sunrise can't quite remember exactly what to expect there but plants putting off some flowers and looks like some fruits are starting to form i think each of these plants a few of them haven't had any flowers yet but most of them are looking like they're well on their way to producing some good fruits and then this one here is our tam jalapeno like i showed before it's just a no low heat jalapeno pepper and these ones here just kind of move around and look at those radishes again they're growing the radishes in there but this one here is a new mex big jim pepper and um I got these pepper seeds and a cool package sent to me from Patrice at Patrice's Projects. I'll put a link to an episode I did with her this last season as I was heading out to the National Heirloom Expo. And I was actually on her channel too and uh, did a video with her. I think there might be a link in that video that I just put the iCard for uh, to where uh, I was on her video and tried one of these. It kind of got me a little bit, but it was a really delicious pepper. 
And then this one here, nice big yellow monster, big yellow uh, sweet peppers. So really looking forward to what we got growing on with our peppers here. Now I got another spot here. I'm going to kind of show you where we got a few other things growing along the alleyway. A nice bunch of radishes there. Look at that. Bonus from the pepper garden. Now down on our back side of our alley, just across from where we have all of our tomatoes and melons and all of that. We have this part of the alley that is the backside of my neighbor's home here and he's uh, given us permission to use this space to uh, grow some more containers and the main reason being that this has really good south facing sunlight it's getting good full sun here so I really wanted to take advantage of that and be able to grow some uh, over here we've got another uh, tomato this is uh, the same as the first variety we have over on the other side. This is an orange Kentucky. The difference here being, though, being in the full sun, even you'd think it would be doing a lot better, but I don't know. It seems to be getting some leaf curl. Leaves look kind of sparse. But it does have plenty of flowers growing there. And I think there's some fruit starting to form inside there too. So we'll see how this gets going here. As the season continues, like I said, it's still gonna be getting hotter. And then another uh, Prax Cherry Tomato. This one here has been actually the real slow grower of them all, but it's now really actually just starting to really kind of stretch out and grow a little bit more with some uh, flowers popping out and everything too so should be a good provider and then next to it we've got this pepper i picked up on a sale at the garden center and it's a sriracha pepper so i thought that would be interesting to grow one of those Let's see how that turns out and right down here Got another set of a few more of our um, five gallon water wicking bucket systems. I'll put a link up right now here to the video of how we put those together. We've got in here some more peppers. This here just being, I bought this at the same uh, sale at the garden center. This one being a um, just a California wonder, just a green bell pepper. So, um, I like to grow more sweet peppers because I really use those more than the hot peppers, but I do like growing some hot peppers too. And this plant here and the plant next to it are both the same. These are a uh, purple beauty. So they're like a purple variety of a sweet bell pepper. Everybody's putting on flowers. We should be seeing some pods growing real soon on these plants for sure. Really growing well in that south facing sunlight. Now next to them, these two pots here, these guys are really, really growing. I'm not talking about the, uh, I think we've got a uh, cucumber or something growing there as well too, growing in there, but these are eggplants. So we got a couple of really nice, good sized eggplants growing here. I really like these leaves. Eggplants have such really cool leaves. And as you can see right down in there, 
Looks like we got a flower coming up. So we should be seeing some uh, eggplant fruit coming up here pretty soon. Right in here, another one too. Yep, and then we've got this uh, mystery melon of some sort growing out here and kind of climbing along. Just gonna kind of help it go, even right here on the top too. Just gonna have it kind of go along and see what happens and see what we get. I love volunteers, I love the mysteries. And then right here, in the last one, trying this one again this year. We grew this last year, but wasn't really successful. I think uh, just, again, similar to this season with a lot of everything else, this one did kind of get out early enough. But um, this is a ground cherry. And you can see in here we've got flowers forming and I think there's some actual yep right back here there's a ground cherry there they grow inside these uh, husks so they'll grow and form and mature in there and then the husk will dry out and uh, they'll kind of fall to the ground when they're ripe yeah, this plant is looking really nice this year. We've actually got some fruits coming off of it, so looking forward to being able to see how those taste. But yeah, really being able to take advantage of that full sun and uh, grow some nice plants here. Just a quick update here from one of the last videos we put out. This is my neighbor's back of the alley garden himself. Everything is just taking off and growing so well. He always have ha has had that advantage of having that south-facing sun there. One thing I kind of wanted to go in and show you real quick, just as an update. The last uh, episode, I believe I told you that he had decided not to grow corn this year. But as I found out just a couple of days later after making that video, he did actually plant out the corn. So he told me he wasn't going to, and then he actually did. So we'll get a chance to watch that corn reach for the sky there. It's a really tall, cool Mexican corn that he grows there. So keep updated on that in future videos. So there we go. A really cool tour of our back alleyways where we got all of our peppers and tomato varieties growing. It's really, really cool varieties growing out here this year. I'm really looking forward to some really, really good fruits and all coming off of them real soon. Plus, we got a chance to look at all of the other different things that we got growing on back there. Uh, some of the pumpkins and melons and squash. Plus, how about that eggplant? The eggplants in the uh, containers are looking really, really awesome. So looking forward to seeing some really cool fruits coming off of them soon. So we'll have those coming up for you on some updates here coming up. So if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button down below, you know, and follow along with more garden adventures with us here. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or anything at all, hit me up in that comment section down below. I'd love to hear from everybody. And if you haven't already, hit the thumbs up, give this video a big, big like, and we'll see you all again on the very next episode. do a whole perfect take of everything and then go in and try to put the files onto the computer and find out that you actually didn't film anything at all. You don't want to do that. You really, really don't want to do that. I just did that. Man. That's a hot one today, man. Ooh, boy. Gotta love summertime gardening. Back alleyway gardens here. Whoop. I'm gonna fall over. That's a really, real, really, blah, blah. boy. We don't look.
look like I don't want to look like I'm sweating. Oh. For tomato and pepper varieties, and we've got somebody pulling up. Oh, okay. Oh yeah, taking some videos. Good. I make videos of all the garden stuff for YouTube. Yeah.